He's an actor, comedian, writer, and his new film Moxie premieres on March 3rd. Welcome back, returning champion, Mike Barinholtz. I have come to reclaim my title of <laughs> best guest. I'm taking you down, Guy Brainum. He'll hear this. You He'll better. Come. Oh, I know. I'm ready for you. <laughs> I'm ready for All you. Right. <laughs> Let's get into it. What a week. Sydney, what happened to the dings? What happened? We had a whole plan around live dings. I, I emailed Sydney and said I would handle yeah. the dings. And it was my bad. I apologize for that, guys. I'm on it now. It, it, it should work now. Sorry about that. Thought we were doing an experiment with live dings. <laughs> They're bringing energy to it. Sydney, we need another ding to get out of this morass. Thank you. You really have evolved into like Jerry Lewis at the telethon stage, just yelling at the tech people constantly. <laughs> Sydney knows this with love is part of the fun. It's part of the fun. Sydney, if you if you're if if you're if you're cool with this vibe, give us give us a yes or a no with things. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Damn it. All right, we're going to start with the worst joke submitted by our writers. That's what we do. Hasbro announced that Mr. Potato Head will now be gender neutral, changing the toy's name to just Potato Head. This infuriated conservatives who say that there are only two genders, potato and potato. <laughs> um, well, listen, I think that's a good joke. If you like jokes, if you think this is a funny thing, like if you think this is a funny situation, I don't think this is funny. Okay. Um, I can okay. tell you this. I can tell you in my house, we, <laughs> we call it Mr. Potato Head and we hold him every time we say the Pledge of Allegiance before every meal. And we don't cave to this liberal media pressure. Like, we believe what we believe. It's Mr. Potato Head. It's a man. And that man is Don Rickles. And if, I can tell you this much, if Joe Biden wants my vote in 2024, he will address uh -huh. this tomorrow. Live, unscripted, I want him to discuss this. I, I think that's generous of you to think you should wait till tomorrow. There's a reason that we have an Oval Office. It's for tonight, nights like tonight. Is it, John, where does it end? What's next? Where does Check it end? Strong? Voltron? Are you going to tell me the little robots that came together to build Voltron were women? Listen, I'm a, I'm a normal man in his 40s, and I, this mm -hmm. is important to me. And I, I just hope, I think it frankly deserves more coverage. So I get it that you have to make jokes. It's a comedy show, but... <laughs> It's, it's, I take it very seriously. Uh, you're, the emotion that you're expressing, um, uh, it's really powerful. Um, uh, wait till you hear about the fact that they're gonna say that uh, the Etch-A-Sketch doesn't have a gender either. I mean, come on. Like, what am I shaking? I wanna <laughs> know what I'm shaking exactly. <laughs> hey, it's, it's uh, Adam and etch it's etch Adam and etch <laughs> not Adam and Steve sketch. <laughs> Can we get that foghorn one more time? <laughs> Sydney, our guest wants a foghorn. <laughs> On Monday, Spotify announced the launch of Renegades, Born in the USA, a new podcast in which former President Obama and Bruce Springsteen engage in personal in-depth discussion. Looks like Father's Day came early this year. <laughs> I have to say, though, I, I, I hear him in the ads. I don't believe he's using those meal kits. <laughs> I mean, he sounds so convincing. Obviously, he's very persuasive as a figure. He's very charismatic. But do we really think he's making that stir fry? I don't know. Before we get started, I want to talk about MailChimp. Now, <laughs> now this is a service that Michelle and I use it all the time. Let me be clear. Yes. Let me be clear. There is a better way to have an email provider. <laughs> Free yourself from the chains of big tech. MailChimp. That was amazing. That's That was amazing. Uh, for those listening, uh, Barack Obama just wandered in and delivered a, an ad at the perfect moment. It was amazing. Do you think it's a problem, Ike, that Barack Obama and I have the same job? <laughs> like, I, I, like, I don't like that for him. No, it's good. It's, 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 it, it, it shows that, you know, he's like, <clears throat> he's just like a regular guy. You know, you guys podcast the same, from the same type of room, I imagine. And and uh, I think it just, it, it brings him down to earth uh, a little bit. And, and and quite frankly, it raises you up to a higher level. So I think this is, I think it's it's good. 
that he, um, you know, is occupying the same space as Joe Rogan. As Joe Rogan. I think, though, I mean, one thing that does, I think, make it feel like it makes sense is that we are both doing this from different rooms on Richard Branson's yacht. (laughs) You're on Branson's. I'm on David Geffen's yacht right now. That's crazy. We're on different yachts right now. The right-wing conference CPAC, which announced this year's theme is America Uncanceled, canceled a guest speaker. CPAC said, this is real, this is the quote, We have just learned that someone we invited to CPAC has expressed reprehensible views that have no home with our conference or organization. And then everyone said, can you be more specific? And then CPAC said, the views were anti-Semitic. And then everyone said, can you be more specific? And then it turns out to be Young Pharaoh, who said very anti-Semitic things, but forgot to create just enough plausible deniability to get away with it. You got to call them global financiers, dude, said Marjorie Taylor Greene. You got to put some space. You got to create some distance. First of all, uh, the fact that they disinvited young pharaoh is ridiculous he's was a fantastic snl cast member so funny does an amazing benzel so that was a wrong b i'm a little conflicted and i don't really want to go there just because i am speaking at cpac uh this year i am i'm i I was gonna ask to plug it at the end of the show but we'll just get it out of the way now doing a panel uh Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah doing a panel with uh you know sebastian gorka yeah, big, 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 big head. Big guy. I'm doing a panel with him and the QAnon Viking. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's that's a it's, hot that's a hot ticket. Yeah, it's 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 uh we're slated for three hours, but I think we'll be done in like a half hour. It's all about <laughs> um, how Colin Kaepernick <laughs> created cancel culture, and it will be moderated by Tiffany Trump. And wow. tickets are still the the email I got was readily available. Um, we're going to be streaming it. It's going to be pretty off off the wall. So I would love uh, you guys to check that out. I'll just reiterate, uh, Ike, the uh, QAnon shaman, uh, Seb, Seb, Zeb, Zeb, Zeb Zorka, Seb Gorka, uh, and uh, Tiffany Trump, uh, who will believe she's at a gay rights event uh, for some reason, uh, and a bit tipsy still from that event. Uh, they're doing a panel at CPAC. It's just catching up. It's they've locked out three hours. Ike's a little concerned. They only have thirty hours, thirty minutes worth of conversation in them. Yeah. Uh, Check it out. We, we really need to move tickets, guys. Matt Schlapp is a family friend, um, and he gave me this slot, and I don't want to let him down. Uh, our family's been friends for years. We we met at a conference for people whose last names sound like diarrhea. <laughs> And, and I'll just say that, like, you can't see this, obviously, but he has a um, what seems to be something from a bachelor party he says uh, the back slappers. Uh, that's what his T-shirt says right now. That's what Ike's shirt says. Uh, that, it seems really like a friendly some sort of inside joke since a, a, a Baron Holtz slap inside joke. That was a little that was like his 50th birthday party. We all cool. we all went to Tahoe. We had a good time. He's a great guy, actually. Russia's Hermitage Museum is involved in a growing scandal after the authenticity of some Fabergé eggs was called into question. Evidence has come to light that these so-called eggs were not laid by magical birds at all, but were instead crafted by skilled Russian artisans. That's it. Hey, here's a question for you. I don't do you know anything about Fabergé eggs? Do you know I anything mean, about them? Yeah, I, I, you know, I know what they are, you know, uh, but that's it. How many of them do you think there are in the world? How many Fabergé eggs total in the world? I'm going to say 3,000. It's like 50. 50, yeah, yeah. No, but I, as a kid, like Fabergé eggs and quicksand are something that are part of the childhood imagination in yeah. a way that disappears into adulthood. I didn't realize there was only a couple dozen of the things. Everyone's always like, ah, oh, it's as fancy as a Fabergé egg in the content that I imbibed as a child. You were raised in the 80s. You watched mm-hmm. Risky Business and Three Amigos, and those were the two the highest stakes, most terrifying things. It makes perfect sense. Makes perfect quicksand sense. is not a real thing. It literally doesn't exist. It's bullshit. That's what quicksand is. Are you quicksand? Are you, are you a quick, are you work for quicksand? I don't work for quicksand. I'm just here to tell parents it's totally safe. There's <laughs> never been an occurrence of it. Your kids can play in it and you shouldn't be fearful that you're going to get sucked into some vortex. It's fine. Brought to you by the quicksand council. That's what that's. <laughs> All right. This is dark, but Lady Gaga's French bulldogs were kidnapped at gunpoint and her dog walker was shot 
Gaga announced that she is willing to offer $500,000, no questions asked, in return for the dogs. Obviously awful, not making light of it. But I saw that, and I just want to say, <laughs> no questions asked? Your dog walker was shot. <laughs> we should get to the bottom of that. I, I want to throw in $1,000 on top of it. But my caveat is I have a few questions. <laughs> like, I, I want to get to the bottom of it a little bit. It's, 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 it's terrible who the fuck does that. It's insane. But um, I, I have questions. We have questions. We have, I have questions. questions. I have questions. Uh, Mel Gibson. Yes. Like, I know he's a personal friend of yours. I don't good want to friend. step on a good friend. I worked together in The Passion. I played the elder, the elder, who was like, it is him. That was you me. Said, uh, I'm a Jew. Kill him. Get him. That's what you said. That's the one. He's the betrayer. That was my exact line. That's, wow. Really good. Chilling. Mm -hmm. Thank you for not doing it in the Aramaic. Uh, but anyway, I, look, I have problems. We have problems with Mel Gibson. Sure. Uh, but... I draw your memory to a, to the film Ransom, where Mel Gibson goes on the news with all the money the kidnappers demanded and says, yeah. fuck you, kidnappers. This money is for anyone who hunts you down. That's the energy I direct at dog thieves. Oh, my God. I want them to be as nervous as Gary Sinise in Act 2. I want them yeah. to be sweating bullets and worried that a unhinged person is coming for them. 100%. The Wisconsin-based defense contractor Oshkosh has won a contest to design and build the next generation of USPS mail trucks. Oshkosh is best known for their heavy-duty military equipment and baby rompers. That's what they do. Did they change it from Oshkosh Bagash? I don't or know. Or a separate company? There can't be a company called Oshkosh and then a company called Oshkosh Bagash. I think that uh, Oshkosh Bagash is the baby clothes um, subsidiary of... Uh, Raytheon owned Oshkosh. No, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever happened to overalls? They seem great. I never, I have never worn overalls in my whole life. The, I, I caught the tail end of it in the '90s. I didn't have enough confidence to really kind of pull it off um, in high school, but there were a couple of guys who did, and they looked awesome. I've seen a lot of um, women wear them. Um, it's a little more standard, but uh, for a guy to pull it off, you got to really, really have like great parents who like really instilled in you, like, like be confident, be true yeah, to who you are, wear cool. some overalls. And if, if you really have, if you really are cool, you'll, you won't wear a shirt under that. You'll just wow, that rock. Cool. That's like, that's like, if you can pull that off, you're like a God. Yeah, I know. I don't have that in me. Me either. There are some guys that just look extra naked without a shirt. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like some people don't look naked. Some people look super naked. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, like, I don't know why. Like, no one wants to see that. What? I'm jogging. It's not. And it's not like it has nothing to do with body type. Like, there are no. super fit guys that just, they take their shirt off and it's no big deal. Other super fit guys, they look super naked. Yes. Yes. Actress Shailene Woodley confirmed her engagement to Green Bay Packer quarterback Aaron Rodgers this week, revealing in an interview that not only has she never seen Rodgers play, she's never been to a football game. Uh, it's like how Ronan has never listened to an episode of Love It or Leave It, not even once. So we can basically say anything we want here. So I will say to you, the anonymous source he's currently talking to in the living room right now, right now, uh, is... Isn't that amazing? Isn't that crazy? Like, that's a wild. It is crazy. Uh, the shocking thing is that Ronan's never listened. He's been on the show. Like, I've heard him on there. Uh, that's That's maniacal. I think it's I think it's almost passive aggressive and he's trying to power play you in your own home. It's messed up. Maybe oh, I'll write a little expose on him. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Who watches the watchers, you know? Wait, no, who watches the watchmen? Damn who it, whatever. <laughs> Ronan, I love you. You'll never hear this. It's fine. An army vet got an 80 year sentence for killing a person after a two hour argument over which branch of the military was the best. Obviously, a sad day and the first official death of a member of the Space Force. Uh, he'll be ejected out of the side of the space shuttle in a giant sunglasses case, as is the custom established uh, in the canonical film Star Trek II Wrath of Khan. Of course. Of course. Um, and by the way, the coolest branch of the military everyone knows is good old army, baby. Well... The army. That's listen. I think he settled the ma settled the matter. The original the and the best. I'm an army guy. 
Navy, fuck off. Air Force, not even a thing. Part of the Navy. Marines, you seem like nice guys. Please don't kick my ass when I go to Comic Con. <laughs> I have great admiration for. I don't agree. Uh, I have equal respect for the branches uh, and your service. No, pit them against each other. Let's see who wins. That's how we do it, baby. <laughs> a Florida official who set up a VIP list for coronavirus vaccines is under investigation. This is disgusting and abhorrent behavior. And Ronan, fire your fucking agent. Why are we on this list? <laughs> What 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 vaccine do you guys want? What are you gonna get? Are you gonna get Moderna? Are you gonna get Johnson and Johnson? What are you aiming for? That that's a great question. Uh, I like. There's been a lot of I think deeply misleading reporting about Johnson and Johnson. My this isn't even. I know this is like the what the public health honchos want people to think. But I actually, you know, those honchos. I really like give. I don't give a fuck. Yes, Johnson and Johnson. Put it right here. Moderna, put it over here. I don't care. Pfizer, great. Any of them. Any of them. I'm holding out for the Tesla. <laughs> um, Alan is a friend, and I know wow. he's working on it. And, you know, he's actually a really, like, down-to-earth, humble guy, actually. Um, a lot of people think, like, oh, supervillain. He's a supervillain. He's not. He's regular, regular dude. He's, you know, he, like... He gets his adrenochrome infusions every two hours, like you or I do. He's like, like, a regular guy, mm -hmm. and I'm yep, sick of yep. people making fun of him. And I'm gonna take his vaccine, and it's gonna be awesome. He puts on his adrenochrome one leg at a time, just like everybody else. <laughs> just a normal person, and I'm really excited. I think you're right. The Tesla vaccine is gonna be great. Uh, it currently so says old. delivery expected mid 2023. But you I'm pay for it now. I'm, I'm paying for it now. I'm holding out. It's going to be so cool. Oh, my God. People are going to be so jealous when I gram me getting the Tesla vaccine in my Tesla. I'm kidding. I don't have a Tesla. A hundred. I do. A hundred and five year old. <laughs> Sorry. I do. I don't know. They're very, cool. They're very cool. They're very cool. I don't know. Let's get gas. It's cool. I'm not. Listen. I didn't know he was going to go on Joe Rogan when I bought the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, I thought it was nobody, a good looking car. I had no idea that he was going to be like uh, some like shit poster. Okay. Yeah, I like the idea of plugging it in from my kitchen. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know all of a sudden he was going to become like J.K. Rowling. <laughs> like nobody told me. <laughs> Seems like a smart guy. Makes spaceships. That's cool. Was that not cool? All of a sudden, it's like two seconds after I decided to do it too. And then, by the way, jokes on me. Uh, what's it like to drive? I have no fucking idea. I don't go anywhere. 105 year old woman beat coronavirus and said she did so with prayer and gin soaked raisins. When news broke, Big Pharma said gin soaked raisins now cost $20,000. <laughs> um, I'm laughing at that, but uh, I'm a family member of Big Pharma. Both my parents oh, wow. work for Big Pharma. So I don't particularly think it's funny to make fun of a sector of. Uh, the economy that's doing so much critical work right now. So I laughed at it because I thought it was funny, but um, I don't know. I just think sometimes jokes, you have to think that there's people on the other end of that joke. And sometimes those people, you know, are big pharma scions. Yeah, I mean, I just think like, I think, thank you for, first of all, thank you for sharing that. No, thank um, you. Thank, thank you for you letting me. That. And I'll say like, sometimes you don't realize till it's too late that like, you're kind of punching down. <laughs> And I'm sorry. Like, I always think, like, you know, punch up, right? Punch up. That's yeah. a joke. Punch down. You're a bully. And, like, just kind of pummeling pharmaceutical executives. Uh, yeah. It's like, who's who's that for, you know? I just think the who's best jokes are ones that challenge power structures. And I don't think Big Pharma has a lot of sway or power. They're just kind of like this mom and pop industry trying to help people. So the jokes... Yeah. Uh, I get them. I get it. We're having fun. I know. You know. You're. You're. Thank you for telling me. I don't. I don't ever want you to feel like you can't. Like obviously, we're having fun. We're having fun. But like you had, you wanted to share that, and I'm glad I know that, and that'll make me better. Just that's, you know, because I don't want to become one of those people that's like, oh, you don't can't take a joke. You know, I want to think. I want to grow. And I don't want to be one of those people who's like, uh, let's not joke about that. I want you to make any jokes. Please don't self edit or censor. But just know that um, I, I, I have to say what I feel. On Monday, Attorney General nominee Merrick Garland said during his confirmation hearing that his top priority would be investigating the attack on the Capitol. Seems like this guy really hates right-wing interference with routine acts of governance. 
Gotta be in his bonnet. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has come out against House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's proposal for an independent commission on the insurrection. We don't really have anything to joke about here. Uh, we didn't come up with anything, but it's just nice to say Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. It you know, really it is. rolls off the tongue. It really is. It's got a real nice flow to it. And uh, yeah, I love thinking about him um, very upset and uh, stressed out. That's a, like a blessed thing to think about. Also, we learned this week that Republican lawmakers have introduced 253 bills to restrict voting access in 42 states this year, according to a new analysis by the Brennan Center for Justice. One state that sees no changes? Kirsten Cinema's state of denial about the filibuster. How about that? Sophisticated joke, you know? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very sophisticated joke. You gotta know joke. a lot. <laughs> First of all, Neil Brennan has his own policy center. That's yeah. It's the Neil awesome. Brennan. It's the Neil Brennan Civil Center for he, Justice. He kind of does it all, doesn't he? It's uh, the Neil Brennan Center for Justice and Twitter arguments. Here's the deal, man. Like, I can like just say what you feel, and also let's like not fuck with voting rights, okay? That was good. Wow, it's, good. Irish, it's Irishy Seinfeld. That's all it is. Wow, that's. I mean, just a plus impressions. Thank you. And I got all the huge ones. Barack Obama, Neil Brennan. We covered the yeah. whole spectrum. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, that's the one thing. Like, obviously, I think at this point, Neil Brennan impressions are pretty cliche. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Christopher Walken. Everyone's got one. Uh, yeah. Everyone does their Neil Brennan, you know. Oh, you got a Neil Brennan, too? <laughs> On Thursday, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office took possession of Ivanka's father's tax returns and other financial data. This was a long time coming. And, of course, it could go either way. But I'm glad there's a chance he'll finally be exonerated. Uh. <laughs> I'm ex I mean, I, I'm programmed now to believe that nothing will happen, but every time something like this does happen, it, we inch closer and closer to the funniest possible end to all this, which is Donald Trump having to live in another country. Um, Cause I don't think he would ever go to jail, but like if the heat ever got really bad, I feel like he would just move to like, Saudi Arabia or, or I don't know, like Turkmenistan or, or somewhere. And that would be like really, really funny to me if he had to uh, be the first U.S. president to to live in exile. Like if he lived in Turkmenistan and like that became like a MAGA hotspot, like people would be like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to Ashgabat this year see Mr. Trump, it would be like fucking awesome. It would be so funny. Uh, like if a guy's yeah. like, like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm from Staten Island. I'm a voter for Trump. Take it, I take, you know what my boat is right now? Caspian Sea, baby. <laughs> fucking the best sea in the world. I get to see Mr. Trump. Sail that shit from, from New York City. Woo, I love it. Trump 2024. The first Senate hearing over the January 6th attack happened this week, and the Capitol Police blamed poor intelligence for the riot, which is uh, no way to talk about Josh Hawley. Uh, <laughs> so insulting. And a lawyer whose pants caught on fire during an arson trial was arrested on a cocaine charge. Rudy Giuliani cannot catch a break. It's been such a rough... He's just having a rough go of it. When asked, when asked to comment, Rudy said... <laughs> Pfft. Rudy had a, like a five-week run where like in the space of five weeks... He was, he was in Barat to getting ready to, I don't know, get a blowjob possibly. Um, he had four seasons total landscaping. He had a press conference where like hair dye was just seeping out of his head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he was in court and he, look, man, he shit his pants in court. Like that happened. Like he farted in court. <laughs> like what the fuck? What are we doing here? And again, also a podcast host, yet another person with whom I share a job. But don't you feel like his podcast, I, I, it's a miracle if it's ever recorded. Like he's totally, I, I forgot to hit record. I, it turns out I didn't hit record. China's foreign ministry denied on Thursday that U.S. diplomats in the country had been required to take anal swabs for COVID-19 following media reports that some had complained about the procedure. This is disgusting and abhorrent behavior. And Ronan, what is up with that agent? What is going on? Is there a list we can't get on? Come on. I'm just confused as to the nature of this joke. Why is it strange that you test for COVID with an anal swab? Because I just wrapped a TV show and I've been taking two tests every day since October. And Super. let's just say Gloria, the nurse, and I have become close. And I multiple times went to my team and said, are we sure this is the right way? Are we sure I should be? Deep. 
exposing my anus at, at 6 18 in the morning in santa clarita and they said yeah so either it's all a big joke on me or the joke doesn't work god i think it's nice that you're pretending you objected because i think the conversation in fact went more like this hey ike uh we're gonna have to go ahead and uh um give you an anal swap yes for quote for co for covid do you not want a reason oh right right no 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 yeah no i definitely don't want to get that the streaming service Paramount Plus has ordered a reboot of the TV series Frasier, and Kelsey Grammer has agreed to turn to the title role. A reboot of Frasier? I'm listening. Here are some questions I have about the Frasier reboot. One, how much did Niles donate to the Lincoln Project? Uh, two, did Martin die before he had a chance to tell Frasier that it wasn't racist to like Trump and to put a Blue Lives Matter flag outside the balcony? What do you, what do you mean Rick Wilson's coming over for dinner? <laughs> Rick Wilson. Oh, that'd be funny. Sitting there with Niles. What are they going to talk about? And oh, Lilith is in town? It's a Lilith app? Yes. Love a Lilith app. Get Lilith in here. She's hilarious. BB Newworth. She'll definitely oh be in this. She's a national treasure, BB Newworth. Question three. Does Niles get to be gay now and fall in love with Guy, the ski instructor from the Ski Lodge episode? Or are we going to stick with this whole Daphne thing? <laughs> are we sticking with Daphne still? It's a different time. It's a clearly... <laughs> Be free, Niles. I'm not, I believe the character is straight, but, but the energy, the energy, that is a gay energy, and today would be a gay character, okay? Yes, yes. And what happened to Eddie? Is Eddie still with us? Oh, that's, that's going to be hard to explain. Hi, this is the oldest dog in human history, Eddie. Oh, they should do the uh, Card Bob Kardashian hologram for Eddie. So he's just perpetually running around. Okay, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of feeling this now. All right, all right. Next question. When Kelsey Grammer is canceled after his third press hit during the promotional tour, <laughs> does the show get canceled too, or do they just call it Niles? Is it a Connors situation, or are we done? What, did, what, what kind of deal did Kelsey make here? <laughs> I was speaking at CPAC and I fell off the stage. <clears throat> and another thing. I've seen there's a lot of controversy around whether or not I can say the... Stop it. You stop it right now. <laughs> Even in the contest. No. Kelsey, no. I think they need to turn the Frasier set and do what the NBA did and build a bubble. Where no one can leave... The, the, the David Crane has complete control <laughs> where, where Kelsey just is just driven from his mansion to set. And, and, and that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Sorry. It's a COVID thing. It's COVID it's COVID, COVID protocol. Thing. Sorry. Yeah. No, you, you, we need your phone. Sorry. You can get it from the internet. You can get it from 5g. You can't have an internet. Kelsey, oh, you're calling sorry. it. You're calling it. You're calling it a Mark Levin tonight. Yeah. Let me see your phone for a second there, Kelsey. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. My final question about the reboot of Frasier did Roz end up getting a seven-figure settlement from KACL after years of harassment by Bob Bulldog Briscoe? And honestly, a lot of truly unacceptable comments from Frazier Crane, all right, about the personal life of Roz, all right? She should own that station. Like, she should yeah. really be the owner. That's the move is to have her come back and be like the hardcore boss who doesn't uh, suffer fools. We have two pitches because that's your pitch. I love that. Ross runs the fucking network. Yep. A, the A plus pitch. Yep. That's, that's, uh, we got to do that. Let's go. Here's my other pitch. Freddie, all right, little Freddie, who is quite the effete uh, Frazier Niles type in the show, he's yeah. grown up. Wait a second. Is he the spitting image of his grandfather? Have we replicated that dynamic between Frazier and Martin with Frazier yes. and his son, Freddie? Is Freddie streetwise? And not book smart like and his a little, dad. A little sour, a little sour a little, sometimes. A little sour, a little, like uh, it. <laughs> yes. little uh, uh, obstetra, obstep, obstetrous, 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 obstetrous. There's three obstetrous. things. She, Roz is the boss. The grandson is his grandfather, hologram dog. Let's go. And Niles is gay. Thank and you, Ike Barinholtz, for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me, buddy. Funny, man.